Hey, welcome to That Guy Talks. Movies, collecting movies, Criterion Collection stuff, 4K movies, streaming movies, different content, television shows, things of that nature. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I appreciate you being here. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell so you know when I put up new content. To those of you who have already subscribed who are here with me, truly appreciate having you here as well. Let's get into it. So... Tonight, Wednesday, this is uh, Wednesday, July 21st, uh, I got to see uh, a special event at an IMAX uh, theater. They did, I guess, Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures put together an IMAX, like a special event of Dune 2021. Denis Villeneuve, uh, 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 absolutely, I was anticipating this. I got free tickets to it. It was a free event. It was kind of like first come, first serve. I was able to snatch up a pair of tickets for this uh, locally near me here in New York. And um, uh, I, I took my 14-year-old to see it. And the anticipation, I got there probably 45 minutes earlier because it was like a packed house. It was kind of like first come, first serve as far as the seating goes. So we got there and you know we, we sat anticipatory, anxiously awaiting this. Uh, and I, I haven't felt like that in a long time where I'm waiting for a film or the anticipation for a film and like what's to come and what we want to see on the screen, that feeling, uh, especially when you are surrounded by a bunch of other people and you're all there for the same purpose and you hear people, you hear the chatter, you hear people talking about um, Dune and Frank Herbert and the, and the 1965 novel and, and you know, there's young people and old people and, and in between different generations and having conversations about, again, the novel, about the 1984 film, the David Lynch film, uh, and, you know, whether people love it or hate it and all the problems and like what they're looking forward to with uh, Denise version. So it was just a really good feeling being there. And then theater darkened and the IMAX screen just, just boom. And you get this introduction uh, by uh, Timothy Chalamet. And uh, it was just, they showed, uh, see what, let me just back up. We didn't really know what to expect. I think the the actual ticket and the event information on the, on Dune, the movie.com was kind of like, you know, there was some, supposed to be some never before seen footage and the new trailer. And that was all we knew we were getting. Oh, and something regarding Hans Zimmer and the music. But what they did was they showed us the first 10 minutes of the film. There was like an intro and there was all different stars uh, talking about the movie. And then there was a 10 minute, like starting from the beginning, 10 minute, the first 10 minutes of the film. Now, first 10 minutes were amazing. I mean, it just, you didn't want it to end. I almost wish they didn't just show us the first 10 minutes. I was kind of like, okay, they're going to show us 10 minutes and then it's going to just drop and we're going to be like, oh shit, I'm into this. But really good. So it opens up. Uh, with uh, Zendaya, who plays, you know, Chani, and she actually, it's in voiceover, kind of like the 1984, where the, you know, I guess it was uh, the princess that was actually doing the voiceover, but this is a little different, and that was Virginia Madsen, um, and she was on screen, anyway, let's forget about that one, but yeah, so Zendaya opens this with voiceover, and right away, they go right into the politics of this whole thing, so this is a political novel, you know, politics, philosophy, religion, all these different things at play here. And this like immediately jumps into the politics of it and dealing with imperialism and like different political themes when it comes to, um, you know, our planet here and our people, things we can relate to where, you know, certain resources, you know, uh, nations and people wanting to grab resources for wealth and not giving a damn about the indigenous people of that particular place where those resources may be. Um, so that's kind of like immediately like right up front in this, in this uh, movie in the first 10 minutes. And I thought that was kind of cool. Um, we get a look at Paul Atreides and his mother uh, at breakfast and her kind of like quizzing him or not quizzing him, but she starts to get him to use the, the, the Benny Gesserit way of using that voice that they use to command things and make things happen. And she kind of gets him into it. And he's kind of like, Oh, look, I just woke up. Like, do I have to do this? And she's kind of like constantly training him. So you get a sense of that. She's always got him on his toes and she's always preparing him for greatness and preparing him for the future. Um, so, we get that scene. We get the ceremonial scene where uh, Duke Leto is sort of like officially like, uh, in a, again, a ceremony that kind of like officially has, you know, the House of Atreides basically um, taking over Dune, uh, Arrakis, uh, and it's him accepting the role to do that. So we get to see that whole scene. And that was just, I mean, everything, every single frame, every shot, the costume design, the production design, everything is just Amazing here. We get to see um, then 
uh, uh, Denis comes on and talks for a while and then we get another treat. We get like another 10 minutes of the film. We get an action sequence where we see Duke Leto and Paul Atreides and Gurney and they're on um, one of the ships, which is, again, the the production design of the ships. And it's kind of like, if you recall Man of Steel, how the production design was for their um, for their ships and their, their vehicles and they kind of replicated insects. So, which makes sense because nature's sort of natural way of creating the best flying machines. So like wasp and bees and flies. If you remember Man of Steel production, you will remember this. So in this, it's like the same thing like these these ships these fighters and things that they're in are like they replicate wasp or like dragonflies and it's fucking awesome to look at the production design is insane but we wind up getting like a 10 minute clip where uh they actually are rescuing a harvester on arrakis and it's like about to be you know taken in like a, a sandworm is on its way and it's about to actually swallow this thing up uh and we get to see that whole scene play out we get to see paul uh, like first on Arrakis and his like natural connection to it and how he kind of just bonds with the planet and he feels some stuff almost gets left. It's really the action sequence, the music. Let's get into the music. Another treat that we got was having the incredible, the incredible Hans Zimmer, probably my favorite of all time at this point, um, uh, doing an interview with Denis and they talk about the music and what I thought was the most, and, and again, I got to see, the first 10 minutes of movie, then another 10 minutes in an action scene. But for me, besides all of that, what really resonated, what really got me was Hans Zimmer talking about the fact that with this film, right, he thought about the idea that most films where they take place in another world, another galaxy, all these things in space, the music always has like French horns and trumpets and cellos. And he was like, well, you know, like what if those things don't exist so like what they did was they wanted to invent their own instruments and the one thing that he mentions that would carry throughout the universe no matter where you are would be the human voice so they did special things with human voices and created their own instruments or sounds of like invented instruments for this film and it is just fucking brilliant and it's amazing to even think of it like that because that's not something you would think of um the idea that you're going to create a score for a film that takes place, you know, in the future, in some galaxy far, far, far away, and you totally eliminate the typical idea of horns and strings and the cello playing, because that's what you hear. Just about every single space movie you can name, that's what you hear. So I just think, you know, shout out to Hans Zimmer again as, you know, one of my all-time favorites, if not the best, I think. Um, so I thought that was great. Um Costume design, production design, everything looks fucking spectacular. There is nothing here. There is not, there's nothing here. This is an event. This is a movie that is going to rock the 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 box office. It's going to rock the screens. You're going to see this, and this is going to take its place in history as one of the greatest sci-fi movies ever done. And there's so much anticipation behind it. Um, I think that for generations who don't know Dune, they're going to come to this and be like, holy shit, what was that? That was incredible. It'll almost be like this generation's Star Wars, if I may even go that far and say it. Um, but I haven't felt like this in a long time, and this feels good. And I'm going to end this particular episode by saying this. This is going to premiere on October 22nd. It's going to be an IMAX. It's also being released on HBO Max. And I'm going to say this to you now as a film lover, as an aficionado, as somebody who takes this shit serious. If you watch this on HBO Max, fuck you. Let me not say it that harsh. If you watch this movie on HBO Max, don't ever consider yourself a film lover. Don't consider yourself a film. Don't just don't do it. I know the whole COVID thing might be a like a, a reason to sort of say, okay, well, I'm still not ready or I'm not vaccinated or I'm not ready to be in public or be around that many people. But even then, I still say, don't call yourself a film lover. Call yourself a casual person who watches movies and occasionally you like something, okay? Because my real, true film people are going to be in the theater for this. There's no way. I have an incredible home theater set up. I have a great... Dolby Atmos, surround sound, the whole nine. I've got a LG C9 OLED television. I kept, I, I have an incredible system. Outside of having like my own home theater, uh, like an actual theater with a big movie screen, I don't have that. Okay, I'm not bawling. But my shit is insane. And I'm telling you now, I'm not going to watch this on HBO Max. I'm not going to watch it on HBO Max. There's no way. You will totally 
totally kill the experience if you watch the same Spiegel Max. The way this was filmed, the production, the size of it, the scope, you can see it just in the 10 minutes I saw. The new trailer, I didn't even talk about the new trailer. We also got to see the new trailer. And if you thought the old trailer was off the chain, the new trailer, by the time I premiere this video, which will be Thursday, uh, the 22nd, when this video is out, I believe the actual trailer will be out, the new trailer. So hopefully you get a chance to see it. I'm done talking. Dune, I'm looking forward to it, October 22nd. Make sure you get tickets. Make sure you see it in the IMAX. If you're paranoid, wear two masks, three masks, duct tape your face, whatever you got to do. You got to see this movie in the theater, October 22nd. I can't wait to talk about this on my channel. All right, if you're new here, again, hit the subscribe button. I truly appreciate that. All right, I'm growing the channel. It's going to get better and better and better. You're going to love it. Uh, if, and if you've been joining me, I truly appreciate you. I can't not stress that every single time. I can just say it over and over and over again. I really appreciate you guys. If you like this video, hit the like. If you've seen, if you were actually you know, where I was, if you had tickets and you saw it in your city, uh, cause I believe it's tonight and tomorrow. Uh, so you might have tickets for tomorrow. Let me know what you thought, what you saw, what you, you know, how much you're looking forward to this. I, I just want to hear from you guys. I truly appreciate that in the comment section below. All right. That's it for me. In the meantime, wish everyone love, peace, power, and prosperity. And I will see you on the next that guy talks.